What's the crack, everyone? So recently I got chatting to Chris Hay uh, when he did a shout out on Twitter to see if anybody wanted to do a collaboration. Uh, Chris Hay makes some of the most visually pleasing and content rich and best narrated uh, sim racing content on YouTube. So I asked him uh, if he knew how to drift and if he wanted me to teach him how to drift. And it kind of got me thinking and I really kind of wanted to make this scale. So uh, as a result, I uh, have decided I'm throwing down the gauntlet to him and issuing a challenge to everybody watching this video. Um, the format is simple. I have two types of challenges, a beginner challenge and an advanced challenge. Uh, in this video, I'll talk you through each challenge in a demo, um, and I'll show you each one of them step by step um, and how you can learn to actually complete the challenge. The idea here is to get people who don't normally drift to uh, learn to drift. This is really a learning to drift video, but it's also a chance for people who can drift to do the advanced one and really show off their skills. So once you uh, accept the challenge, uh, you simply upload a video to YouTube uh, responding to the challenge. And at the end of the video, you call out three people with sim setups, whether they drift or not, call them out. Um, the video can be in any sim, any car. Uh, it can even be done with a real car if you want. Uh, so uh, simply, and here are the instructions, uh, simply use hashtag LD Drift Challenge anywhere in your description so that it's searchable, so that I can easily see them and judge them and all that kind of stuff. Um, link to this video uh, in your description so that people understand the format, so people understand the rules, and people can learn how to do it all. And at the end of it, call out at least three people. Um, and uh, that's about it. Uh, the winner will win um, this here, which is official James Dean merchandise. Uh, but the coolest thing about this is, and if you don't know who James Dean is, James Dean is arguably the best drifter in the world. This was given to me by James himself in person, and it's signed. So he signed it for me, wishing me best of luck with my YouTube channel. Um, and today I'm making the difficult decision to give this away as a channel prize to people. Um, so the winner of this challenge will win this. Uh, I would love to get it framed, hang it on the wall, all that kind of stuff. But this is really, I think, in the interest of the community and the winner is going to win that. Um, so the winner is going to be decided before the 1st of May. Uh, so the challenge will be judged purely on entertainment value. Uh, you don't worry about the quality of your video uh, or the fact that you don't have amazing equipment. Uh, it's a fun challenge and really it's the sole purpose is to kind of try and boost morale during this really just uncertain uh, period in the world. Uh, everybody's suffering. Um, so let's try and make a little bit of fun, a little bit of uh, exciting excitement. Um, don't worry about the game title or whether you're using a Leo Bodnar direct drive system or a keyboard and mouse uh, or gamepad or console or whatever, don't even matter. Just do a video, accept the challenge. All you need to do is follow these instructions on screen, couple of simple instructions, uh, make sure you get the hashtag right and stuff like that so that all these videos are searchable. But for now, I'm gonna teach people how to drift. Beginner challenge. The beginner challenge looks a lot like this. I'll demo each skill followed by a quick instruction guide on how to execute that technique. Beginner challenge one, handbrake turn. This one sounds easier than it is. With a handbrake turn, you want to rotate the car exactly 90 degrees or 180 degrees and demonstrate great car control, awareness of momentum and ultimately just impress people. The thing that you skid the car around or between can vary greatly, so use your imagination. You don't need to use a drift car for this technique as any car in any sim with a handbrake is more than capable of doing a perfect 180 degree handbrake turn. To execute this skill, simply drive along in first or second gear, I recommend second gear, and uh, wobble the car slightly and pull the handbrake and see what happens. It's vitally important at this point that you also press the clutch in. Otherwise, the rear wheels get very confused. The clutch and handbrake go hand in hand as you'll never use the handbrake unless you have the car's clutch pressed in. What you do with your steering wheel just before enduring your skid will determine how much you rotate and where the car ultimately ends up. Once the rear of your car begins to rotate, use the steering wheel to guide the front of the car to where you want it to end up. 
if you need to, use the foot brake to slow yourself down slightly just in case you're carrying too much momentum. Always remember that the front wheels will still have good traction even if you're pulling the handbrake, so the car will still move where the front wheels are pointing. This is a fundamental rule of drifting which people often don't give enough thought. Beginner challenge 2. Do a power slide. Pretty much anyone can do a tight donut with a bit of practice. This challenge is about doing a wider donut to the point where the car rotates in one direction but the steering wheel is actually pointed in the opposite direction. This is called opposite lock. To initiate a power slide you have several options. You can kick down the power so that the rear of the car breaks traction, let go of the wheel and catch it again when the car is sliding at the angle that you wish to hold. This only works in super high horsepower cars and is not really a great technique. It's probably your most instinctive technique, but it leads to a lot of understeer and frustration and it tends to make you spin out once you do actually get sliding. You can do the exact same thing, but wobble the steering wheel from left to right slightly or from right to left, whichever your preference is, to upset the rear balance of the car and ultimately break traction as you put down the power. That's known as a Scandinavian flick. If your car still won't break traction, you can use and abuse your clutch a little bit. This is a very, very well-known technique called clutch kicking. This is a simple technique where you engage the clutch pedal fully, get your revs up, so rev your engine up high, and once your revs are up, you just take your foot off the clutch and the rear wheels go absolutely apeshit, making it easier to slide, especially at lower speeds. Last but not least is probably the most common entry technique for a drift car, is where you use the handbrake like you did in the first challenge, pull your handbrake while the clutch is engaged, get your revs up slightly and take your foot off the clutch and release the handbrake at the same time and that initiates a drift. So you push in the clutch, pull the handbrake, rev up a little and let your, both your clutch and your handbrake go at the same time. Beginner challenge 3. Do a figure of 8. In this challenge, we'll link two power slides together and encounter a change of direction called a transition where you change the orientation of your car using precise steering input and throttle control to change the direction while still maintaining a drift. Most drifters would argue that without any transitions, you're not actually drifting, you're just sliding. I'll let you guys argue about that one in the comments. To do a figure of eight, you need to master the transition. Doing a figure of eight simply proves that you had control before and after your transition. So listen carefully to these instructions because once it happens, it happens pretty fast. Firstly, initiate a drift. Hold the drift at the angle that you want, same as what you did in challenge number two. When you're ready to do the transition, start steering out of the slide. As the car begins to straighten, you may want to pull slightly off the throttle. If you're committed, keep that throttle pinned, but the rear end is gonna fly to the other side. Your steering wheel is gonna want to fly out of your hands at this stage, especially if you have a more powerful steering wheel. If you have a less powerful steering wheel, feel free to give it a flick to help it in the right direction. Again, remember that the rear of the car is rotating, but the front wheels are pointing in the one direction. So the faster the rear of the car is switching to the other side, the faster that steering wheel needs to rotate. There's no way you can move your hands that quickly. So at this stage, you need to do the least intuitive thing about drifting. You need to leave that steering wheel go. This is an incredibly weird sensation for anybody who's not used to drifting. Letting go of the steering wheel seems like the absolute last thing that you should do and it's probably the main reason that you've seen all those Mustang fail videos. As well as letting go of the steering wheel at the right time, you need to catch it at the right time. Catch it too early and you're going to straighten up. Catch it too late and you're going to spin out. You need to catch it at the right time. You need to balance the throttle and the steering at the exact angle so that you can catch the slide after your transition. At that point, you're already naturally in the second part of the figure of eight and you're doing a power slide around in a circle and you can do a transition at the exact point that you ended your last transition to complete that figure of eight. Some practical advice, don't be too generous with the throttle. Use a clutch kick if you need to and do remember to let go of that steering wheel. And again, always remember that your front wheels are always pointed where your car naturally wants to go. Embrace that and think about it all the time when you're drifting the front wheels point where you want to go. Transitioning is a skill that takes a lot of practice, but it's one of the fundamental building blocks of drifting. Master this one before moving on to the next challenge. Beginner challenge four, link three corners on a track. This is where it starts to get real. Choose a track, any track, 
I recommend a smaller track because you need less speed and everything is a little less aggressive when it happens. Any purpose built or designed drift track will have naturally flowing corners so I recommend doing this on a drift track as opposed to a Formula 1 track. Do make sure that the track isn't too narrow. Make sure there's enough margin for error so that you can correct your mistakes. In this challenge, you'll apply what you've learned so far to drift the car without straightening for three consecutive corners. I say three corners because that involves two transitions and is enough to demonstrate the skill. To start, initiate a slide into your first corner. Hold the slide and plan your transition. Your transition will occur in advance of the apex of the corner you're taking. You already want to be facing the direction of the corner before the actual apex. Once you've transitioned, get the front of your car towards that apex. Throttle control is vital. Remember to use your steering wheel sparingly and remember which way your wheels are pointing. Beginner challenge five, do a wall run. Now that you've learned some of the basics of drifting, you need to start showing off a little. Every single real life drifter remembers the first time they scraped their bumper along a wall. Now, differences in competition judging styles in drifting often penalize for contact with walls due to the potential dangers. But for the purposes of this challenge, I want to see little or no daylight between your car and the wall. This is your chance to put on a show. The longer the wall run, the better. The faster the wall run, the better. More walls, better. You get the point. To do a wall run, simply drift as normal but get yourself closer and closer to the edge of a track. In real life, you wouldn't even attempt a wall run until you're comfortable with placing the car at the outer edge of a track, holding a slide which follows the outer edge of the whole track all the way around. To get out close to the outer edge, it's all about combining the skills you've learned in the previous challenges. The main reason every drift car has a handbrake is to allow you to get out wide to outer clipping zones. It also helps you when chasing another car and allows you to maintain angle or place your car, especially when you make mistakes. The easiest way to do a wall run is to simply initiate your drift close to a wall. This is usually low speed and relatively risk free, but it's also one of the less impressive ways to do a wall run. The harder way is to transition before your wall run. So send the car one way and then carry the momentum through your transition and get on the wall and keep it there for as long as possible. As I say, the more aggressive your approach is to that wall, the longer you keep it there and the faster you go, the more impressive a wall run is. Doing each of these challenges is very, very difficult. Doing all five of them is even more difficult. But if you really, really want to achieve that gold standard, Try and do all five of them back to back and record it whatever way you like, whatever cameras you like, but just make sure it was all done in one setting. That would be the ultimate way to get a gold standard for this challenge. Please also bear in mind that I'm just a guy who drifts. I'm not a professional instructor. I'm not a pro drifter. I'm pretty okay at drifting, but that's about where it ends. So if any of you have better advice or want to correct any mistakes that I've made, please do so in the comments because I'm not claiming to be an expert here. I do know that these techniques worked for me and I have taught people to drift before and they've done so quite successfully. Also remember that the point of this challenge is not to do all of these things flawlessly. People want to be entertained. So show your failures, have a bit of fun with it, do things that are completely off script, make it a bit of fun. There really is no right or wrong way to do a response. If you found all of those too easy, I do recommend going on to the advanced challenge, giving that a go. Advanced challenge number one, do a wall run. The wall run was also the final beginner challenge. And as you've picked the advanced challenge, make sure that your wall run is far better than any newbie can come up with. I expect advanced challenge wall runs to be fast, exciting, potentially across multiple walls, including clipping points maybe, um, points will be rewarded for angle, flare, and just overall craziness, madness, your vehicle choice, your track choice, all that kind of stuff. This is your opportunity to entertain us. Advanced challenge number two, do a backwards entry. The backwards entry is an entry into a corner where it seems like you actually over-rotate, but in fact, you meant it. You no, know, it's not a recovery from a spin, and yes, it's extremely hard to do in general. It involves catching your steering wheel at the last possible second and using your handbrake to exaggerate your angle going into a corner. Those who are good at backwards entries make it look easy. Those who aren't can still make a lucky video every now and then though, so give it a go. Advanced challenge number three, 
do a 360 entry. A 360 entry is almost always preceded by an aggressive transition which leads to an over rotation which needs to be embraced and further exaggerated by the driver. If you give too much throttle or too much steering angle on the way out of a transition, it kicks the rear of the car out and it can be very hard to catch. A 360 entry capitalizes on these forces to rotate the car full circle with the help of the throttle. Making your car spin after a transition isn't too difficult. The beauty of a 360 is that you come out cleanly, maintain your drift into the next corner and make it look like it was all intended to happen. If you think that still sounds easy, give it a try because it's not. Advanced challenge number four, hit all the clips in one run. For this challenge, you need a drift track with clipping points. Your goal for this part of the challenge is to do as close to a 100 point run as you can with any car on any track. A 100 point run is one where you basically fill all the clipping points and zones that you're supposed to fill with the car on a qualifying line and put on a massive show for everybody. Advanced drivers will probably know all of this and any beginners who can fill all the clipping boxes on a drift track shouldn't be doing the beginner challenge. Advanced challenge number five, get on someone's door for three consecutive corners. One of the most impressive and beautiful things in drifting is the ability to drift close to other cars. When two cars battle or tandem, the chase car tries to mimic what the lead car does while keeping super close proximity to the lead car. That means that you must mimic everything including their mistakes. This is one of the hardest skills in drifting and one of the hot, most high risk things you can do when in a drift car. Luckily, when you're doing this on a simulator from the comfort of your own home, there's no costs, there's no damage, you're not gonna hurt yourself and the other driver can't get out and come over and punch you in the face when you ruin their car. And as if all those challenges aren't enough, again, I'm presenting a gold standard challenge for this. Yep, you've guessed it. Do all five of these advanced challenges back to back without stopping. Ideally, you maintain drift the whole time. I'll allow people to wait to find a car to tandem with if you're doing it on an online server. You're allowed to edit multiple camera angles, etc. But the challenges must all be completed back to back. So here are my nominations for this challenge. This is the first time most of you are hearing about this challenge. So I'm going to nominate a few more than the three that I've recommended you nominate. I've gone for content creators, esports drivers and pro drifters from all walks of life to try and get the ball rolling on this challenge. But make no mistake, by watching this video, you've been challenged. I'd like for you to go and challenge your friends, come up with videos and let's all compare, let's all have a little bit of something to celebrate in this time of uncertainty. First up, the man who inspired all this when we got chatting in a Twitter conversation, Chris Hay who makes some of the most amazing sim racing content on YouTube with some of the most visually pleasing driving footage that you're likely to see from a sim title. Next up is Will from Boosted Media. Will just built a killer new setup and has never drifted on a simulator before. And he's just hit 50,000 subscribers on his YouTube channel. So what better way to celebrate than doing a few skids? Will also makes valuable and insightful content and is great at setting up storyline for his videos. The next person I want to challenge is Gamer Muscle, probably best known for drinking tea and getting headshots in Counter-Strike while using a steering wheel. Gamer Muscle is mo one of the most entertaining sim racers on YouTube. Next up is Josh Martin. Josh is a Thrustmaster esports driver and I know that drifting is way out of his comfort zone, so I'd be excited to see what he comes up with. The next nomination goes to Evan Walsh and the crew at DigitalMotorsports.com. These guys are great drivers, really good at racing, and a couple of them are pretty handy at drifting. I'd love to see what they come up with. I'd also like to nominate Kyle Woods. He's one of the best sim racers in the world, regularly winning competitions in both DCGP and Virtual Drift Championship. Next up is Pro Drift Academy driver and regular streamer Alan Hines. Alan is one of the most prolific sim drifters who's made it big in the real world. Next up is Red Bull athlete and one of the most entertaining drivers in the world, Connor Shanahan. And last, but by no means least, the former head of the Irish Drift Championship and British Drift Championship, and now the boss man at Drift Games, Dave Egan. Dave has just gotten his own sim, and I know that he and the team at Drift Games can do a great job with this challenge. 
I'm really excited about this challenge and I can't wait to see what you all come up with. And again, just because your name isn't on this list doesn't mean you can't just do the challenge and start it amongst your friends. I really want to see what people come up with. I really want to watch some drift related content and now is a better time than any. I'm Lawrence. Thanks for taking the time to watch this video and I'll chat to you later.